In this video, we'll discuss the construction and working of an electric bell. An electric bell has something called a gong. A gong is a metallic object that is bowl shaped. You can imagine it like a steel bowl in your kitchen. What happens if you strike a bowl in your kitchen, a steel bowl with a spoon? What happens? Doesn't that make a clangy noise? Well, that's what the gong does here as well. Next, we also have something called an iron core. An iron core is just a piece of iron. We take some wire and wind it around this iron core. And this is called the winding. Now, this iron core and winding together behaves as an electromagnet when we pass current through the winding. So to pass current through the winding, we place a switch and we connect the winding to a cell. Well, obviously this end of the circuit is still not done. Let me show you what comes there. We have this contraption that looks like this. Let me explain what this is. So at one end, we have what we call as the striker. The striker is a metallic ball that goes and hits the gong. And when it hits the gong, it produces a sound. The striker is connected to an arm called the lever arm. For obvious reasons, you'll see. And the lever arm is further connected at this end to a spring. Great. The spring applies a force on the lever arm and pushes it downwards. But if the spring is constantly pushing the lever arm down, there must be something to keep the lever arm in pl place, right? And that's where the contact screw comes in. The contact screw is an adjustable screw that uh, can help you change the height at which the lever arm sits. Right? Pretty simple. Great. Next, we have this piece that's stuck to the lever arm and it's made of iron. It's an iron strip that is attached to the lever arm. Okay, great. Now we've gone through all the parts, all the components of the electric bell. Let's now focus on the working. Let me dim some of these labels out. And let me remind you that an electromagnet will start behaving like a magnet only when you turn the switch on, right? Obviously, only when the switch is turned on will current flow through the winding and only then will this setup behave like an electromagnet. Great. So let me turn the switch on. There you go. So the moment I turn the switch on, current starts flowing through the wires and now the iron core and the winding together, they are behaving like an electromagnet. They are behaving like a magnet. Great. What if you brought a piece of iron close to a magnet? Obviously, the magnet would attract this strip of iron, right? And in this case, when that happens, don't you think the iron strip would want to move upwards? Well, it will want to move upwards. And when the force of attraction due to the electromagnet is greater than the force with which the spring is pulling this lever arm down, what's going to happen? This lever arm is going to move upward and then the striker is going to strike the gong. Yes. Interesting, isn't it? Let me play this back once again. So what's happening here? This electromagnet is applying an upward force, is attracting this iron strip in the upward direction, right? And that causes the striker to go and strike the gong, right? Now there's something else that's also happening. The moment the striker moves upward, contact is lost between this portion of the lever arm and the contact screw. Can you see that gap? And we know that electricity won't flow through the air, right? And so the moment the lever arm moves upward, the circuit gets disconnected. The contact screw is now acting like a switch and turning the electromagnet off. And because the electromagnet is now being turned off, don't you think the spring will pull this lever arm back into position, right? And that's what happens. But the moment the spring pulls it back into position, the moment the lever arm becomes horizontal once again, don't you think then that the circuit would be completed here, there's no gap here now, and that the electromagnet would be turned on once again? Well, if the electromagnet has been turned on, then the iron strip is going to be attracted upwards. And if the iron strip is attracted upwards, it's, the striker is going to go and strike the gong, right? But again, we have that problem of the contact being lost here. And again, since the circuit is broken and this is no longer, a, no longer an electromagnet, this lever arm is going to come back down, right? But wait a minute, again, 
the circuit has been turned on. So the lever arm is going to want to move upward. And so this process continues, right? And when it continues very fast, this is what it sounds like. Yes, deafening, right? That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.